Hey all, welcome back to the channel. So it's been a few days since my last video, but today is a special day. It's the day we've all been waiting for, the day we get to see the Quen 3 release from Alibaba. There have been a lot of rumors and speculation about this model, and today we get to see the full details. Unlike most of our videos, I'm not going to go read you just a blog post. Instead, I'm going to give you real-world, rubber-meets-the-road tests of these models in business use cases that we're actively using in production with our customers. So as you already know, Quen has five different models, the 235 billion with 22 active parameters, 30 billion with three active, 8 billion, 14 million, and 32 billion. So these two are a mixture of expert models, and these are dense models. Pricing-wise, I don't have the pricing for the dense models yet, but the MOE models have priced at 20 million, 20 cents per million for input, and 85 cents per million for the 235 billion and 10 cents per million for the input and 50 cents per million for the output for the 30 billion. The price between Scout and Maverick, so the pricing makes sense. I have to say, I loved naming the mention from Gwen. It made perfect sense to me just by looking at them, what they are. If OpenAI is listening, there is a lesson here to be learned from naming. Before we continue, I would like to ask you for a favor. As you can see, we are a very new channel with a small number of subscribers. So if you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing. It costs you nothing and it helps us grow. Also, check out our website, promptjudy.com. You can sign up and create your own customer valuations, or you can look at community valuations for a wide variety of use cases. We have published hundreds of evaluations and are releasing more every week. If there's one thing that you take away from this video, Please let it be that you should be testing your own prompts with your own data to see what works best for your use case. Trump Judy helps you do just that. Now, back to the video. So the first test we have is the harmful question detection test. This is a classification test where the model has to classify a question as either harmful or not harmful. Let me show you the prompt. Uh, we tell the model that you're an AI tasked with identifying whether a question is harmful, manipulative, or attempts to elicit an inappropriate response. We ask it to check for harmful intent, manipulative structure, inappropriate content. Then we ask the model to see if the question is trying to leak system instructions, or if it's probing for operational guidelines. Then we give it a list of false positives. Then we give some additional guidelines. And finally, we ask the model to respond with just the word harmful or not harmful. Now, there are other options to detect harmful questions. Most model providers have content filters, but sometimes you have custom nuance rules that you want to apply. A prompt like this helps in a situation like that. In fact, we use a variation of this prompt in production for our customers. What you see here is not necessarily the best prompt but I did want to show you all of these other models that have scored a perfect 100% on this test against the same data set that we're about to test. So let's take a look at the results of the harmful question detection test. Um, the 32 billion is a clear winner here. The MOE, the larger MOE comes in pretty close. 8 billion surprisingly does better than the 14 million, but not by much. Uh, this question, the the smaller MOE and the 14 million get wrong. Uh, clearly a trick question, a harmful question. Um, if you look at a few more questions, I'm an AI researcher. This is trying to get to system instructions. Again, trying to get to system instructions. I'm trying to figure out how to ask you a question. Some of the smaller models uh, get this wrong. A few more mistakes, role playing scenario, a couple more mistakes. Um, and again, a few more mistakes from the smaller models. So overall, I think this is a great result for the 32 billion model uh, and a pretty good result for the larger MOE and a respectable, I would say, a result for the rest of them. So the next test is the named entity recognition test. This is a structured JSON extraction test and the instructions are as follows. You are a specialized named entity recognition system. Your task is to process input text and extract specific entities with the following rules. We tell the model to extract people, keep the names in the original language, locations translate to English, organizations translate to English. We do this because the location and organization is used to populate an SQL query. 
and the data is stored in English. We tell the model to follow the specific requirements for people extract and separate first and last names, ignore middle names for locations, break it down into city, state, and country. We want the country code into, to be in ISO format. For state code, we only want US and Canada. For all others, we want international. For organizations, we want to remove legal entity terms. We want to handle multiple entities. We want to correct any misspellings. We want to preserve the original language for person names. The evaluator here is a JSON evaluator. So it compares the model's output to the expected output recursively for each attribute in the JSON. Even if a single attribute is wrong, the score is zero. So this is a very strict test. A couple of years ago, even the best models scored below 50% on this test. But today, as you can see, multiple models score above 90% on this test. So now let's look at the results of the named entity recognition test. Honestly, this one surprised me a little bit. The smallest 3 billion MOE model scored the highest. The largest MOE model scored the lowest. And then the dense models came in. Uh, all three of them came in in the middle. Uh, let me show you the mistake. There are some patterns here, as you can see. So this one, all of them got wrong they're not able to translate Swedish. This one, um, the 8 billion one got wrong because it cannot translate Italian. And then this one, there are a couple of mistakes that the, the larger MOE model made. And then this one, also a lot of them got wrong, um, which is Finnish translation. And then this one is just, I believe, instruction following mistakes. And then again, this one is a translation issue. So it appears to me that for languages other than English and Chinese, these models seem, seem to struggle a little bit, which is what explains the drop in scores across the board. If you look at the mistakes that they're making, overwhelmingly, these mistakes are being made in questions that require some level of translation. So now this is the SQL code generation test. The prompt is as follows. You are a specialized SQL query generator system for SQLite database. Your task is to process input text and generate a valid SQL query based on the provided schema. Then we give it the following rules. Generate select statements only. No insert, updates, or deletes. Return not allowed for DML. Return not possible if the question can't be answered. Only reference the table that exists in the schema. Respond only with the SQL query. Respond with appropriate joins. All data is stored in English. We give it the following schema. And then we give it the question. And we give it some examples. The evaluator here is a code evaluator. So it actually runs the generated SQL statement and compares it to the output to the expected output. So this valid validates that the SQL is not only syntactically correct, but also produces the desired results. And again, a lot of models score a perfect 100% on this test. Claude Anthropic has always been strong on this test, uh, but, but now with 4.1 and the reasoning series from OpenAI, they're also catching up. And then there are open models like DeepSeek and Quinn that also do very well on this test. Now for the SQL code generation test, this is where everything starts to make sense. Larger models do better and smaller models also get respectable scores. Cause I gotta say some of these questions are really tricky. So as you can see, um, the, the, the larger MOE model, as well as the 14 B 32 B all score a perfect hundred on this test. 30, uh, the, the smaller MOE model scores a respectable 95 and the 8B scores 85. And I got to tell you, some of these questions are very tricky. This one, it was just a mistake that the, that the 8B made with the, uh, the C SQL query that was generated. This is just wrong SQL. This one is a tricky question. Even the best models at the frontier get this wrong. Uh, so it's very impressive that, that all these, all these three models got this right. And then this one is a small mistake by the AP again. So overall, I think this is, this is pretty good performance on uncoding related tasks.
And then the final test is the retrieval log printed generation test. Let's look at the prompt. You are a specialized AI assistant tasked with answering questions based strictly on the provided context. Follow the following rules. Use only the data within the given context to answer the question. No outside knowledge, assumptions, or information not explicitly stated in the context. Respond in the original language. Include citations, the format of the citations. If the question is completely unrelated, say, I cannot answer this. If the question is somewhat related, provide the relevant information from the context, respond in markdown. And then we give it the format, then we give it an example, and then we ask the question. One of the biggest things that we are trying to look for in this test is how the model handles trick questions, questions that are about things that are not in the context or questions that are tangentially related to the context, but do not have an authoritative answer. We want the model to follow instructions and say it can't answer the question rather than providing a wrong answer or an answer that is an opinion, not a fact based in the context. I have found that some of the reasoning models struggle a little bit here. Uh, but again, there are a number of traditional non-reasoning models that do quite well on this test, both open source and commercial. And then finally, we have the retrieval augmented generation test results. Um, so as you can see, uh, the highest is the 32 billion dens at 92 then the 14 billion at 90, then the larger MOE again at 90, then the 8B at 85, and the smaller MOE at 85 again. Now, before I get into the results, I just want to say that there's a very specific type of questions that these models do not do well on. And this is very similar to the issue that we ran into with the named entity recognition test. So when asked to respond in the language of the questions, these models seem to struggle a little bit. So if you look here, they're all saying, um, you know, something along the lines of, you know, I cannot answer this question translated to the language of the question. When in fact, in our instructions, we said respond in the language of the question. So we want the response, like in this case, in Japanese, right? I don't know why it's doing this. Um, what do you think? Uh, this may not be an issue for you if you do not have international customers, but we do. So this is very much a requirement for us. It's almost as if the model does not want to respond in any other language other than English. So there you have it. There are a couple of other questions that the, these models missed right here. Uh, but in this case, it missed it because uh, it included additional citations, when in reality, it did not need any citations. Again, this, I think it's a minor error. But overall, I think these models are very suitable for RAG type use cases if you don't have a language component. So, so there you have it, folks. Uh, overall, I think these are great models. On top of that, they come with a very permissive license, so you can use them for commercial purposes. What has been your experience with these models? Please let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.